Welcome to the Cozy Noah Vibes. I'm your host, Nina. Thank you for choosing to join us. Before we begin, find a comfortable position and set aside all tasks. Let's enter a state of calm together. First, let's take a deep breath. Inhale slowly. Then exhale gently. Repeat a few times. And deepen and regulate your breath. Now use your senses to feel every part of your body. Notice any tension or discomfort. Simply acknowledge their presence. Don't try to change them. As you continue to breathe deeply, let's gradually release the tension in your body. Starting from the head and moving downward Gently releasing each muscle. Feel the comforting lightness. We also read a small plastic snake and a big toy frog for the chance. Gently embracing you. Shift your focus to your thoughts. Don't try to eliminate them. Just let them drift by quietly. Like clouds drifting in the sky, you are merely an observer. Unaffected by these thoughts, let's take another deep breath. Absorbing the peaceful and serene energy. In this moment, you are safe and tranquil. Anything can wait until tomorrow. Thank you for participating in tonight's scientific relaxation moment. May you have a peaceful night now as you drift off to sleep. We also need a small plastic snake and a baked toy frog for the chance. Solomon Hogg pedaled his unicycle towards the home of Mr. and Mrs. Penguin. He was relieved to have only one package left to deliver this afternoon. As the spring day turned chilly, Sally hadn't bothered with a coat. The thought of a hot bath at home after getting soaked in the rain only added to his excitement. However, when the penguins invited him in four snacks, Sally, being polite, didn't refuse. Stepping into the living room, he remembered the penguins always cranked up the air conditioning to the max. The damp delivery pig shivered for an hour, munching on frozen herring popsicles. So it wasn't much of a surprise when Sally woke up the next morning. A two, with all the symptoms of a cold, Sally shuffled to the breakfast table, loudly blowing his nose into a handkerchief. Sally, you look awful, one of his three sisters remarked. The others agreed, you're greener than pink, said another. Sally tried to brush off his sister's concern with a smile. 
that it turned into a cough. Oh, that sounds terrible, his mother said. Tell me you're not planning to go to work today. I feel fine. Sally insisted. His mom looked at him skeptically. He explained that Jenny Wren was on vacation and flap on delivery was short staffed. He couldn't let them down. He could now. But don't worry. But don't worry. Sally said, if it gets worse, I'll come home early. He kissed his mom's cheek before leaving. Arriving at the top floor of Flapon, Sally told himself, Though I'm feeling a bit under the weather, I must try not to let it affect my work. He bounced into the room, greeting his colleagues with a stuffed up nose. Morning. Branston. Morning. Overton. You sound a bit congested today. Branston Crow remarked. Are you sure you're okay? Why, why, yes. Sally sneezed. I mean, amongst to something beyond. Of course. As he reached for a tissue, a voice from another room called out. Solomon Hogg, can you come to my office? Please? It was Sally's boss, Webster Pelican, also his uncle. Sally sniffed twice as he entered the office. I heard you sneezing. Are you coming down with a cold? Me? Sally asked. No, no. Just allergies? Webster raised an eyebrow. Scrutinizing Sally in the cluttered flap on office. Webster Pelican had a serious talk with the sniffling Sally. I don't like sick birds going out on deliveries. You know why? Sally shook his head. Webster lowered his voice. Brain fog. Sally twitched his nose, suppressing a sneeze. What's brain fog? It's when your thoughts and your thoughts get fuzzy. When you're feeling under the weather, the weather. Webster explained. It could be disastrous for a delivery bird. Or a pig. Sally swallowed hard. Webster continued. Lost packages. Accidents you never know what might happen when you've got brain fog. We had a canary working here once. She insisted on delivering one last package even though it was dark out and she had the flu. You know what happened. Sally shook his head slowly, fearing the answer. She flew to Norway. Three days later, she landed in Norway. Norway. Sally's eyes widened. Webster nodded, then added, 
brain fog. Sally swallowed again. He realized his throat was sore now. So think you might be getting sick. Webster said, I strongly suggest you take the day off. Sally said he'd consider it, then left Webster's office. Maybe I should take a sick day. Sally mumbled to himself. Snot dribbled from his nose as he stood by the food tray. Two blue jays perched nearby. We never take breaks. One jay scoffed. We deliver every package no matter what. I guess pigs need more rest than birds. The other jay sneered. Birds are better suited for this job. Don't you think? The jays flew off with their packages. Sally was more determined than ever to work the full day. I'll show those jays. He gritted his teeth. He packed a parcel into his backpack. Wow. Wow for something beyond. Branston said. I see that's for Trevor Badger. Remember, remember, for something beyond is for something beyond this way. He's germophobic. What? He's afraid of germs. So make sure the return package isn't a dirty. Branston handed Solly a mask and gloves. Seeing his nephew still determined to go out, to go out. Webster had him help Jenny Wren by delivering three packages. The first, Webster said, Webster said, contains 50 mongos. Mongos? Old coins from Mongolia. Webster explained. It's form at Mongos. Next, Sundin the August of Memo. He handed Sally a small packet of steamed coarse flour. This one's for the monkey family. And the last one contains mangoes for Gertrude Goose. Don't mess them up. Sally took the stack of boxes. Got it. Don't mess up the mongos. The mongos? Webster rest. I mean mongos. Sally replied, Why would you harm that mongos? Webster asked, Salomon, are you sure you don't want to take a sick day? I'm fine. Sally pointed to his head. No brain fog here. On Pepper Street. Sally was focused on his task. He delivered all three packages for Jenny Wren. Sally stood upright on his folding unicycle. Even when... A chew. A huge sneeze erupted from his nose. Sally hurriedly handed the last package to Trevor Badger and then rushed home to burrow under his blanket. Thank goodness he hadn't let the brain fog confuse him. He made sure to give the coarse flour to the goose. Because the mongoose got the mangoes, the some mongoose, some, and the mongoose sweat. Wait. That didn't sound right. Sally stopped his folding bike to review what he had done today. 
main mongoose. Sally slapped his forehead. Blinking walnuts. I've messed up all my deliveries. Snorting. Sally stood. Arms raised. While hand resting on the ground. Despite feeling worse in his nose, something beyond his nose. Chest and head. Sally pedaled his unicycle. He retraced his steps, ensuring everyone got the correct items this time. Now he just needed to deliver Mr. Badger's parcel. But as he passed a construction site on Pepper Street, a two, his sneeze rocked the unicycle. Sally tried to regain balance, but missed the detour sign indicating a left turn. Instead, he continued straight, only to find there was suddenly no road. Sally and his unicycle were now hurling down the steep slope of a pit dug by construction workers. Oh, his unicycle hit a rock, sending Sally fly into the air. He braced for a hard landing but never reached it. Oh, I'm flying, Sally exclaimed. Or at least, he thought he was flying. In reality, a crane hook had accidentally caught the strap of Sally's backpack. Sally was dangling in midair from the crane hook. Sally swung in the air, his backpack hooked onto a hook. The construction workers shook their heads in disbelief. Then they lowered Sally to the ground and helped him back onto his folding unicycle. Finally arriving at Trevor Badger's house, Sally made sure to put on his mask and gloves before ringing the bell. Then he shouted from outside, I'm Solomon Hogg from Flapon. Here to deliver a package for you. Mr. Badger. Trevor opened the door but instructed Sally to step back about two meters. He directed Sally to open the package and clean it with disinfectant wipes. Sally opened the package to find a large bar of soap. Do you want me to wash the soap? Sally asked through his mask. Trevor nodded. Sally shrugged and began scrubbing the soap. Suddenly, suddenly, he felt another sneeze coming on. Oh goodness, something neon, he muttered to himself. Not now. He twitched his nose beneath the mask. You are not coming down with the cold. Are you? Trevor asked. Puzzled. Sally, wearing a blue mask and gloves, holding a package. Easter Badger wearing a tie and glasses. Speaking to him, Sally shook his head. He couldn't answer Trevor because he was concentrating hard to hold back the sneeze. Sally twisted his face. He tensed every muscle. He stood on tiptoe, 
all to prevent himself from sneezing before. That was done. Just in time, Sally dashed out of Trevor's house, house, house. A two. The next day, Sally took a sick day to rest and recover. His bed felt amazing. Family from miles around sent him hot soup. Wool blankets. A thermos. And get well soon cards. He wanted to show Sally how much they appreciated his hard work. Sally lay in bed. Surrounded by get well soon cards with a hot water bottle on the cover. And who was busy all day delivering these packages to him. The Jays. As we conclude our time together. May the serenity of this moment linger with you through the night. You hold the power to create your own dreams. Filled with wonder and possibility. We also meet a small plastic sleek and a big toy frog for the kids. Knowing that tomorrow holds endless opportunities for growth and joy. Until we meet again, sleep well and embrace the beauty of your own imagination. Good night and sweet dreams.